Hey everybody, welcome back to Haybuck Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over this Brissa Trapper 95. It is a full tang, Scandi grind, fixed blade knife. Take a quick look at it here. We're going to go over some specifications, do a few different tests, and overall just give you some of my first impressions and opinions. Been rocking this thing for a couple of weeks now, and I'm going to let you know what I think about it. <laughs> So I have used Brisa's before Brisa Brisa. If I'm saying it wrong, correct me in the comments, but this is a neat little fixed blade I saw online. Again, like I've always noticed that the edge retention and just the capabilities of these knives are exceptional. One thing is it is extremely shiny and I've got the sun, more early morning sun coming right down on me. So I would say the only thing so far I'd finish is maybe a satin finish on there. But honestly, that's not too big of a complaint. And I'm having no issues at all with chopping this paracord up. That's two loops right there. Sweet. Let's move on to test number two. Do you like knives? Do you like survival gear? Do you like camping videos? Then I do invite you to subscribe to the Haybuck Outdoors YouTube channel. I post weekly or bi-weekly content over here going over gear, camping videos, hiking stuff, EDC, firearms. If you're into any of that stuff, I do invite you to subscribe. Please be sure to like, share, and comment too. Promotes us in the algorithms and helps me do what I do every single day here. Thank you. Apologies, I had to reposition the camera there. I want to see if this blade actually has a 90 degree spine on it. That way we can throw sparks with a ferro rod here. So let's see. Yep. Not the camera. There we go. Yeah, 90 degree spine all right. Which is good. I look for that on most of my survival knives. Uh, definitely important. For woods work and when you're in the outdoors if you need to start a fire like in a gif be able to do that obviously i carry a lighter with me wherever i go but having that capability is good as well moving on cobalt or chromium in it i think cobalt uh, i'm not 100 sure though so that's in like the d2 family so obviously uh, you're gonna have decent edge retention pretty durable and uh corrosion resistance i think that's with the cobalt or the chromium i'm pretty sure it's cobalt correct me if i'm wrong and there it's uh, the corrosion resistance to rust and whatever is going to be exceptional compared to like a normal <clears throat> a normal D2 or something like that in the stainless family. Uh, so this is something pretty cool which drew my attention to. It is 3.6 millimeter th thick or an eighth of an inch. So definitely a beefy little guy as you can see that. The blade is just uh, under 4 inches so 3.74 inches long which is really cool. Now interestingly uh, Brissa designs this one in Finland. However, it is made in Italy. So, Italy typically makes uh, pretty good knives. It does good craftsmanship with them. I know Joker is uh, Spanish, but they do a lot of work in Italy as well. So, green marker to handle scales. Uh, beautiful red liners. I will say there was a little minor defect I had in my handle. Looking at it right here, there was like some of the micarta was starting to shave off or like feather off a little bit that was kind of weird but yeah full tank construction you do have a lanyard hole um, I wouldn't be banging on the, the pommel of this like if you're trying to get a tent peg in or whatever I just don't think that would be the best uh, th these go for around 130 to 150 I picked this up I believe for like 134 I mean for the quality uh, no complaints there I'll show off the leather sheath here and then we'll move on to the rest of the video. So the sheath itself, very well done. It's a leather sheath, full grain. You have a, let's just look at the whole thing first. So, fits in there pretty good. I'll show that off real quick. The entire thing adds probably about two ounces to it. Good stitching coming down here. You do have a nice drainage hole, which is good. Uh, beautiful, uh, what would you say? Uh, leather loop right here to fit on your belt. Most belts will fit in there. I've got like a almost a two inch belt on and it fits in there pretty good. You do have the dangler option. So if you want, I typically run the dangler. Some people don't. You can just put it down like that or take a pair of cutters, like bolt cutters, and get that off there if you don't like it. Retention though, honestly, not bad. No real complaints. But yeah, sexy looking setup, especially with the green micarta and the dark brown leather. I've carried this for a while. Still kind of squeaky though because it's brand new. But besides that, relatively quiet. I just want to show you guys real quick while I'm filming the video on this how unusually green it is out here. 
I have never seen it this green in California. Maybe some of my California natives can uh, correct me on that, but yeah, definitely a really neat place to film this review. I am going to make a basic little spear point here real quick, or at least attempt that, and uh, see how she does. Now, there are, is no jimping on the back of the blade there, but I'm just resting it. I'm trying to rest it on the edge of that 90 degree spine and see if there's, if it's done well or if I'm gonna get severe hot spots or not. So far, not too bad. It's biting into that wood pretty good. And this is, I don't know what the hell this is. It looks like birch. Oh, a little bit harder of a wood to cut through out here. Got a knot in there trying to get out. Now the reason you'd be doing something like this is to make a tent peg or, I don't know, you forgot to bring in a device to cook your whatever over the fire and you need to make like some type of a spear point. This can do it. Also, if you need to write something down in the woods and you don't have a pen or a pencil, you can make a spear point, start a fire, burn the end of this till it's black, put it out in water, let it dry, and you have a pencil. Charcoal. Um, charcoal pencil. I've used that before when I've needed to write stuff down. My dad showed me that actually probably about 10, 15 years ago and works fairly well. Obviously it's not as good as a number two pencil or anything like that, but yeah, got through that really quickly. Now for some of the finer work, you can make those little, like the feather stick little wisps of wood there, as you can see with relative ease. I'm not having to put much pressure on it at all. This, this wood seems to be a little bit rotten in the middle. So yeah, it definitely has the capability to make those very, very fine things of wood that you need to use as kindling. And that's very surprising looking at the stock of this blade. And it holds that thickness all the way up to the top. And it's a pretty beefy tip, which I'm surprised it can do as fine of the work as you need. Now, Scandies aren't really known for being the best at, let's say, food prep. I mean, it can be done, but there are obviously better tools Sweet, very micro feather stick. Definitely pretty neat. Let's uh, move on. Now, <laughs> this test is probably the most applicable to most of us. Obviously we live in a day and age where we get a lot of crap sent to our door, uh, Amazon, UPS, whatever. So I like to do the cardboard test because a lot of times I get bored and if I have an extra Amazon box laying around or something, I'll just cut it up for funsies. All right, let's see. Surprisingly, that just cut through it. Uh, I don't know if it's the, just the, edge geometry on there but did extremely extremely well i think having the, the thicker stock profile too definitely makes it a little bit easier i mean you're just as you can see i'm just filleting this cardboard with relative ease some slight pressure is needed but i can't honestly complain let's see if we can get the really thin ones going yeah overall not too terrible. Check that edge out real quick. See if I've got any burrs or anything. Not noticing any deformities, which is good. Definitely bowler. Uh, I don't know if it's bowler. It's just N690CO stainless steel. Holding up pretty well. Uh, no complaints there. So let's uh, move on to final thoughts. So final thoughts with this Brissa here. I like it. Uh, I definitely think it's a... A good knife if you have the money. Are there knives that can get done the exact same thing for less money? 100%. Uh, for example, if you look in the channel feed, I did a review over the Joker Arui 10. Very similar in size and stock thickness. Not quite an eighth of an inch on that one, but that one only cost me $40 and this one cost at least three times that, maybe even four, depending on where you find these guys. Now, I definitely think it's an interesting classical style knife you do have the the green micarta which there is some minor deformities on there as you can see but overall not too too bad uh, i think it's an excellent steel choice for 150 dollars though i think we could have gotten into a more superior steel than what we're seeing right here so i definitely think i mean it's up to you if you have the money and you want to try out a more exotic knife i mean obviously finished knives are not as common as say your gerbers your box whatever but uh, I like it. Uh, I probably wouldn't buy it again. But now that I have it, I'm definitely going to use it and put it through its paces. I like how just beefy it is and rugged. Because that extra st stock thickness is going to really help it um, stand up. 
and uh, hold up over the years. So definitely, I think the leather sheath too. I think leather is the way to go, honestly, with this combination. The red liners make it stand out too. Um, overall, I'd recommend it if you have the money, but if you're just looking to get into bushcraft, stick with like a Joker or Rui 10, uh, more companion, even more Garber. Uh, you're going to get something like that for not even half the price of this. So, I mean, I have no complaints with it, but I definitely think there are better options out there for less money. So I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more content like this, please, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and comment. Helps promote us and the algorithms. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and please have a fantastic day.